Hello, this is Klaus Jensen presenting my new series called Amazing Moves. And this is my first video in this series. In this series, I will not do a full game analysis. Instead, I will rapidly play through the opening moves. I will start right now, um, which uh, lead up to the critical positions or uh, lead up to the amazing moves that we are about to see. And the, the game you're about to watch here, or in fact already is watching, is Vladimir Kramnik against Alexei Shirov from Linares 1994. And this is a chess classic, and you may already know the game. But still, please enjoy the immaculate imagination presented by Shirov, who has the black pieces in this game. And we are slowly uh, reaching move 24, in which uh, Kramnik played g3. And the complications start right here, where Shirov decides to sack his bishop. He plays queen takes h3. And of course, uh, the bishop on, on f4 cannot be taken right now, because then the bishop on f3 would also be hanging. But after bishop g2, then p sack is in effect. Knight g4 from Shirov, uh, threatening uh, queen h2 checkmate. So Kramnik has to give his king an escape route, and he does so. And uh, after rook a e8, rook d3, um, queen h2 check, king f1. Then we can see that Shirov hasn't got too much attack. Um, and instead of dying a slow death against the ultra-solid Kramnik, which would surely occur after queen takes f4, for example, then queen d2, queen f5, rook g3, then um, Shirov would have uh, two pawns for, for the piece, and surely Kramnik would uh, slowly but surely win this game. So instead, Shirov comes up with a very aggressive plan. He plays f5 in this position. Queen d2 and rook f6, which is deserving an exclamation mark. Perhaps not for correctness, but for imagination and for putting his opponent to the test. And one might think that Shirov's queen is now trapped after rook h3. But in, s in, in fact, this is a trap uh, put out by Shirov. Uh, because after knight, uh, rook h3, then rook g6. And if uh, rook takes the queen, then Shirov has rook, uh, sorry, knight takes h2 check, king g1, and a knight fork on f3, because the uh, bishop is pinned to the king, and Shirov would be up the exchange and having a winning position. So, after rook f6, the computer actually likes uh, Knight takes d5 from uh, Kramnik, because now the black queen can be trapped after c takes d5, then rook h3, and when Shirov plays rook g6, the point now is that Kramnik's second rook could control the f3 square where Shirov's knight would like to give this check, so after rook a to a3, then Shirov's queen is in fact trapped. But this is a computer line, and uh, of course this is not uh, easy to find over the board, and um, in the game, uh, Kramnik played the very human move f3, which is winning the knight on g4, because there are no available squares for this knight. So this looks completely winning for white. And perhaps the position is winning for white. I don't know, but what is sure is that after Shirov's next move, it demands all uh, skills from Kramnik to to figure out what is going on. Because Shirov plays a move that I think you can only uh, dream of uh, being able to make. Because you would have to have very, very, very uh, good imagination to play a move like this. And the move that came here is Rook E4. Shirov's knight was lost anyway, but now Shirov offers something even more valuable, his rook. And it actually turns out that it's dangerous for Kramnik to take either of them. First, let's have a look at what happens if Kramnik would take the rook. He can take the rook with the pawn, f takes e4. And then after f takes e4, uh, if the rook moves, then f4 pawn falls and Kramnik 
would be in all kinds of trouble. If he takes uh, the rook with the knight. Let's have a look here. Um, knight takes e4 here. Then f takes e4. And f takes g4. Taking the knight also would lead to rook f4 check. And again, uh, black, sorry, white would be in all kinds of trouble. He can also uh, try to take the knight. F takes g4. But then rook takes f4 actually le wins for Shirov in all variations. Bishop f3, for example, then rook takes, rook takes, and uh, then the queen is falling on d2. Or he could also uh, play rook f3. But then again, rook takes f3, bishop takes, and again the queen is uh, hanging. And best try would be to give up the queen, king g1, f takes g4, rook f1, but then queen g5, and Kramnik has two minor pieces, plus a rook for the queen, but Shirov has three dangerous pawns and should be winning here. Another try here after rook takes f4 was to play king e2, but then queen takes g2, king g1, and after rook f2, the queen falls or uh, black mates white in a few moves. So, there are a lot of uh, calculations uh, after rook e4, but uh, Kramnik decided to create counterplay by creating a dangerous pass pawn. So he found the very interesting knight takes d5. c takes d5 and c6. And if, if rook takes c6 here, then Kramnik can simply take the rook, f takes e4. And same goes after b takes c6, then f takes e4, or perhaps even b7 right away. So instead, uh, Shirov played rook takes f4, but now c takes b7, Kramnik is about to queen on b8. So what does Shirov do here? Does he play rook f8? No, no, no. He simply puts his rook back on e4. Of course he does. Now the queen is uh, covering the b8 queening square, and Shirov is putting his uh, rook back to e4, where it again can be taken. Or can it? After f takes e4, then f takes e4 check is decisive. Um, white king will be mated. So instead, uh, Kramnik plays rook c1, king c7, b8 queening, deflecting the queen away from the kingside attack, and then f takes g4, and if now, f takes g4 with check, then king g1, and the queen, the black queen, cannot get back into the attack. So instead, Shirov here played rook, sorry, queen h2. Then came rook f3, and rook takes g4 from Shirov. Is Kramnik still winning? Well, being a bishop up and uh, having a dangerous pass pawn on b6, I think the answer could still be yes. But Kramnik has been under great pressure by Shirov, and now he makes a mistake. He plays b7. And after rook f to g6, the bishop on g2 is attacked. And the best chance of defending this uh, bishop would be to queen for a second time in the game on b8 and then after rook, uh, queen takes b8 then rook f2 f4 check but still this would be very very dangerous for Kramnik because there's this f3 uh, threat for example uh, rook c3 then f3 is a very strong threat so um it's not that easy to defend the bishop on g2, and in the game, uh, Kramnik decided to play rook c2 here. But then came rook takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, and queen h1 check. And after king f2, queen b1, it was simply time for Kramnik to resign the game. Although he has uh, two rooks for, for the queen, 
Uh, the three ki uh, pawns on the king side is of course uh, decisive and will uh, surely win the game for Shirov. So Kramnik uh, did uh, withstand the 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 pressure from Shirov uh, a long way, but uh, in the end he collapsed and uh, Shirov won an amazing game. And of course, um, the amazing, more most amazing move. There were were several. The most amazing move is of course this rook e4. I hope you enjoyed this very very nice game, um, and um, I hope that uh, you enjoyed the video. And I hope to see you on my blog at uh, klausjensen.com. It's in fact not a blog right now because there has been a hacker attack on the on the site. So it's it's just a normal chess site at this point that uh, I have uploaded my chess video archive for you to enjoy. So please visit uh, klausjensen.com. Bye bye for now.